Europe's cocaine crisis is getting wider and deeper. It's such a fascinating report there from Nick, and he does have a documentary coming out that you can watch on BBC News this weekend as well called Cocaine Flooding Europe, so lots more on that story. I'm also pleased to say that he joins us now live from his workplace, from the edit suite actually, Nick. Tell us a bit more about the documentary and your investigation. Hi Lucy, yeah, we're in the edit suite here in Brussels and I just want to give you an insight into how we put this together. Basically what we did over a number of months, we met about half a dozen key characters and they have formed the basis of the film that you mentioned there. People like this man, who was actually a com convicted drug smuggler, and he brought a lot of his cocaine in through the port of Antwerp here in Belgium. And my colleague Bruno, uh, who deserves a lot of credit for this investigation, tracked him down. This guy is r repentant, Paul here. He says what he did was wrong, but he gave us an insight into how easy he thought it was to get cocaine into this country. After that, we thought we'd better talk to the customs here in Belgium and I, to be honest Lucy I was pretty impressed by what the guy said here he's the head of customs and he said that they're facing a tsunami of the drug coming in and when I asked him do you think you'll win this battle I mean he amazed me really he said we're never going to win this battle which I thought was quite an admission from someone in a senior position after that we talked to a man who is you know, his identity's disguised here, but he's used cocaine for about eight years now. We asked, um, well, he certainly asked us if we could protect his identity. Uh, we did that, and he says he's been using cocaine at work, during parties, when he goes to see his family sometimes, such as his addiction. And the problem is that these days he's getting lots of adverts and messages on his phone. It seems that one dealer has got his number, and so he gets bombarded with things. He says he doesn't want to buy it sometimes, but he just gives in. So these are the, some of the people we met over the course of a few months, and this is how it took shape, the, the documentary. Nick, one of the things we were all fascinated by uh, and talking about was this narco sub, you know, these submarines bringing cocaine from South America to Europe. What was it like being on board one of those? Yeah, I mean, we were inside for about 20 minutes, Lucy, and that, that was long enough for me. It was on dry ground. But you could just, you, you can't imagine what it would have been like going 4,000 miles from South America across the Atlantic to Europe. Let's see if we can find one of the images here of the submarine itself. It's in here somewhere. But I mean, it was an incredible thing to, to be in. It was homemade. It was something which was, was put together in the jungle. There we are, you can see it there. So we, we went right down inside there. And this is where three men spent the best part of a, a month and what I found really fascinating, Lucy, is that the Spanish police said, although this is the first one they ever intercepted, criminal gangs have been trying this for about 20 years. And if you talk to them, they suspect that somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, maybe around the Azores or the Canaries, there is a graveyard of narco subs which have been used to deliver cocaine and then deliberately sunk. And I think that is an image of what a lot of people told us is actually a crisis in Europe today, Lucy. Yeah, that is an amazing visual you're talking about there, Nick. Good to see you. Looking forward to the next documentary, Cocaine Flooding Europe, this weekend on BBC News.